Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a Synth DIY guy. Welcome to today's video, the much anticipated full tutorial on the ground control by Endorphins from Spain, from Barcelona. And they have sent me the new version. This is the new silver panel, which has a few changes in the graphics and looks super premium, super snazzy in this version. Black one looks great too, but this is super nice. And I will also be showing you some of the new features that come on firmware 2.0. There are quite a few improvements, exciting stuff. But first, I wanna just take you through the instrument in a logical and practical way to get you started making music right away with it. It's very intuitive, it's very musical. It reminds me of the BeatStep Pro, but in a rack form, in that it has eight drum trigger outputs and three melodic voices, and you control it with this two octave keyboard right here. This makes it very, very intuitive and quick for me. So instead of turning knobs to select notes and lengths and such, you can just play like an instrument. So it really turns this little blue box into a full, complete instrument all by itself. So let's just get started. First things first, right? Let's load an empty project so we can start from scratch. So the way to load a project with the Total Recall is you use one of the modifier keys, this asterisk over here. Asterisk and tempo are mainly used as modifier keys. So you can use them in conjunction with other keys to achieve certain features or functions. So if I hit the asterisk and then last step, and now it says project load over here, see? And you see that these are dimly lit a, B, C, D, E, F, and G are dimly lit. If I choose H here now, I've loaded a blank project, right? Now, if I hit just the asterisk, you can see the patterns, right? And as you can see, the first pattern is lit and nothing is dimly lit. So that means that all the patterns are empty right now. Hit stop, which is kind of a uh, exit key as well, right? So you have play, stop, record, last step, the asterisk key, then you have, these are the arpeggiator keys. This thing has an arpeggiator. And underneath the display here, you have the track select buttons. So that means which track you will be programming and using the keyboard for. I get my Befaco brush in here, and get some of this dust off. Okay. So track D is the drum track. Tracks one, two, and three are the melodic tracks. So if I hit track D here, what happens is the keys that are between brackets over here, and they're numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, these represent the trigger outputs there. So if I hit one, we get the kick drum, which is my Pico drum to number one here, right? Key number two is my Pico drum two, which has this kind of weird glitchy kind of a sound. Three and four are the Kraken, so this is the snare, and this is the rim, and together they make the rim shot, right? And then five and six are my sample drum voices. So I got the Kraken and the two drums going into the Pico mix, and that's going out into the auxiliary input of my Befaco ST mix over here. And then we have the Dust of Time, which is my first melodic voice, is going into channel one. It's a stereo module, so it's using the stereo input here. Number two is the Pico voice. And as you can see, I'm only using one input because this one is mono. Number three is the Oletronic Micron, which is an analog full voice that I use as my melodic voice. So the Dust of Time is usually kind of my bass voice. The Pico voice is a Carpus Strong voice that I use sort of as a percussive guitar kind of a sound. And then my Micron I like to use as my melodic voice, right? And then underneath here, the fourth channel of ST Mix is getting the sample drum outputs on left and right. So this one is the hard panned left and right. So here we go again, we have kick, the glitch, snare, rim, kind of a grace note snare, and a hi-hat over here. And then if I go to track one, you can now hear the dust of time. And you can just play it with the keyboard like that. These are the octave selector buttons, so I can go up the octave. And you might have noticed there's a glide. If you play legato, you get an automatic glide. 
And by legato, I mean you play a note without letting the previous note go. If you play them separately, there's no there's no glide, no portamento. But if you connect them, you get that glide, and it's set to the same time as the TB303. So you can do pretty acidy kind of sounds this way, but you can change it, right? And the way that you can change it is using the running man here, modifier. This running man lets you access all of the functions that are in these lower keys here. So you see probability, ratchet, slide time, etc. So if I hit tempo and uh, slide time, it shows me 50 and I can change that to anything that I want, right? Stop gets you out of that menu, right? So that's how you access all these features in the bottom here and we'll get into some of them a little later. This is track two here, which is my Carpus Strong voice, the uh, Pico voice. And this is the electronic Micron over here, track three. By the way, they have these Braille-like bumps on them, so that if you're in a dark space or you're not looking at your sequencer, you can feel like two dots on the drum, one dot, two dots, and three dots for the melodic tracks. These are also notated up here on top of the display. You see these little dots, right? Over here are the mutes, right? So you can mute all the drums or you can mute just any drum that you like. You can also mute the melodic tracks. These also have the little bumps on them. So one bump, two bumps, three bumps here to make it easy to navigate with your eyes closed or in the dark or if you're visually impaired. Now, the first thing I like to do is to tune it to make sure that all three melodic voices are in the right key. So one way to do that is to program a simple pattern where you're just playing the three notes and then make sure that they're in tune. So that means we get to learn how to record it. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn on a metronome. This thing has a little piezo inside that actually clicks, which is very useful. So you don't have to use one of your drum gates. You can just get a little click that only you can hear. So the way you do that is you hit tempo and metronome, push it forward to well, it was already selected on drum. So that means it's going to follow the drum tracks timing settings. You can also tie it to one of the other tracks or with this little minus sign, it means no metronome at all. So you can turn it off as well. We're going to leave it in drum for now. And I'm going to get out of that menu with the stop button, right? And then we're going to press play and let me get my microphone closed there. Hear that? It's pretty soft. I mean, if you're in a loud club you might not hear it but for this kind of setting it's perfect so the first thing i'm going to do is select the track one and play this f note here now of course you need to hit record when you hit record you start seeing the steps over here on the display so let's just record an f note here Okay, now we can do the same to track two. And we'll go to track three. Okay, so let's use the mutes here. pretty good between the micron and the dust of time dust of time digital module so it can be used as the tuning reference we'll mute the electronic and yeah we do need to adjust the pico voice a little bit not much let's turn down the dust of time a little bit that's probably good enough for rock and roll right Okay, so now we can erase this pattern, erase what I just recorded and create a new, actually a musical pattern. And this is an opportunity to show you how to clear the patterns. You can hold the asterisk and press the mute keys. Hold asterisk, press mute. And the first time you do that, you just clear the notes on the pattern. If you do it 
a second time, you will reset the pattern to the default length of 16 steps because you can change the steps up to 64. And the way to do that is you select the track and you hold last step, see? And now you can use these uh, arrow keys over here to jump up in bars. So it goes up to 32, 48, or 64. Or you can use the plus and minus keys here to increment or decrement in single steps, right? So if you want a 52 step pattern, you can do that. But uh, for now, let's go to the drum track here and we're gonna leave it at 16, right? And we're gonna press play. And there are other ways to record as well. I'm gonna show you a few of them. So the first one, let's record hi-hats manually like this. There we go. So I recorded what I played. But now, if I do a long press on the record key, we can see an XOX style editor here. And the way this one works, since this is a two octave keyboard, we have 14 keys on the bottom, so we're missing two, right, for the 16 steps that go in a bar. And the way that Endorphins has worked that out is they add this key and this key. So the ones outside of the brackets, they are also step keys. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. That takes a little bit to get used to, but once you do, then it's very clear. It was a clever solution. You have the eight in the middle, which represent the actual drum voices, right? So here's how I select the drum voice, right? So I, I press the one that I want to program, and now I can do a four on the floor with the kick drum here, for example. See that? Now let's go to the this little glitchy sound. Go. Let's give us a snare on. Here we go, a little rim here. And there you have it. Now let's say you want a different tempo, right? So that's what the tempo key is for. And we can just tap that tempo. Or you can also use, once the tempo is displayed, you can use the arrow keys to jump in tens, right? And the plus and minus keys to increment single digits, right? There are no decimal points for the tempos here. But who needs them, right? So let's leave this at 130. I don't love my kick drum pattern, so I'm gonna erase it. I'm gonna record my kick drum. That's good. I like that better. Okay. So now let's go on to track two here. And track two, I do want it to be longer. I want it to be 64 steps or four bars. So I'm gonna hold the last step and press the arrow buttons until I see 64 on there. Three, four, two, bar two, bar three, bar four, let's go. Turn that back up again. Now I made a mistake, I recorded this on an octave that's too high. But guess what, I can change the octave, right? get it out of record. I'm going to hold the track one key and press octave up. That's going up. Press octave down. There you go. So that's how you can change the octave of your pattern very quickly. Just hold the key for the track that you want to affect and then use the octave up and down, which are the plus and minus keys over here. So there we go. We have a bass line going there. Now let's choose track two, which is that Carpa Strong voice, and just do something rhythmic there. And right now I'm kind of auditioning it, because I'm not recording yet. 
I wanted this to be a little louder. It's number three here, or number two. There you go. You can go up an octave too. All right, this one, I don't need it to be 64, but probably at least 32, right? Make it a little bit interesting. The play button is a reset. So I'm just going to reset right on one. And now I can go back to recording on track two. One, two, three, four. See? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two. In fact, this uh, reset function is cool because you can do musical things with it too, like a DJ. like. Okay. You do have to have good timing because it's not quantized. It, it'll react immediately. All right, so I can hit record now. And let's do that little rhythmic Carpa Strong. Ah, I didn't like it. Let's erase it. Asterisk, mute, track two. And we've erased it. Turn off record for now. Yeah, it's actually in Caesar. And again, if I want that octave higher, let's get it off record, hold track two, press the plus key. go. I've got my delay here. And by the way, I have the MIDI out, right? This is the adapter you get with the ground control. I have the MIDI out of the ground control connected to the MIDI in of the Zen delay here. So my Zen delay is actually synchronized. bit of delay here. Now I can do something melodic. So I'm going to choose track three here. And again, I want to set number of steps. This time I do want it to be as long as it goes, right? To be able to do an interesting melody. And again, I'm going to reset it at the beginning of the pattern. So let's see what kind of melody I can come up with here. Again, I think this octave is a little low, so let's raise the octave. Now I do have the filter cutoff connected to my joystick here. So let's make a slow LFO. Give it some animation there. So cool. So now I can mute stuff, right? Performance wise. Play with the delay. Unmute just one here, just the bass. Now at this point, Maybe you want to turn off the metronome, right? So let's just hit the tempo modifier, go to metronome, and make it a minus. We don't need it anymore. Drums back in. Bring in the Carpa Strong voice. Now let's say I want to improvise an arpeggiator here. These four keys over here, they're the arpeggiator keys, right? And uh, don't mind the, uh, the note values. These are for a different function of these keys. These are for changing the, the time division of your tracks. 
and I'll show you that in a, in a minute. But for now, if I hit any of these, I get different patterns of arpeggiator, right? So the first one says up, second one goes down, third one is random, and the fourth one is in order, in the order that you've played the notes, right? So let's hit the uh, random one, and let's play like a C minor kind of a chord. Ha! <laughs> Okay, sorry, I had to choose track two for that, right? Track three is muted, and here we go. We're gonna hit random, and... As you can see, super easy and intuitive to do things live, deviate from your patterns, right? And so this is the random one. If I do it in order, I can actually Just one note, just repeats that one note, so it's like a roller. As you add notes... So now it's playing back, arpeggiating those notes in the order that I played them in. Once you let go, it goes back to the pattern. And I can turn the arpeggiator off if I want to just play. You can still enter notes, play them in real time, live, even with your pattern playing. It'll combine them, right? It'll combine your pattern with what you play live. Let's mute the bass. Let's go back to the melody here. I can do the same here. Let's get a up pattern going here. All right, I, again, I have to change it to track three. Change the octave. Very cool. Now, let's get out of there. Now, I told you that there's a way to change the time division of the tracks, right? And remember how when you hold the track button, you can change its octave by pressing the minus and plus keys here? Well, again, holding the track select button, I can change its division, uh, right? And you see the one that's lit is the one that's selected. And I can make it faster, see? So I just doubled the speed of my pattern, right? I can also bring it back. Now, it's desynchronized now, right? Because I did this out of time. And remember, you can always reset them. Just make sure you hit that right on the one. And I can do it again with, uh, make it half time. So there's a lot you can do. You can use a quick division to have a beat with uh, lots of ratchets and things, for example. Right, with quick, trappy kind of hi-hats. And you can use a slower division to have, instead of just a four-bar melody, you can have an eight-bar melody, only it has to be slower moving, right? And like this. So this is an eight-bar melody right now. back to the original and now I hit it right on time so I don't need to reset it because it's already it's already synchronized 
Now, here's one important thing. Let's say we like this pattern. We don't want to lose it. Like, let's say somebody trips on the power cable or something. If you don't save it, it won't recall it. So there's a quick shortcut to just save everything. Save the state, all your settings, so you can keep progressing. The asterisk and two times record. All right, so I hit the asterisk two times record and now the program gets saved with all of the settings including the pattern right so if I go here to the live mode which is something I'll show you later when you have lots of patterns using this live view you can just switch between patterns with a single key press and then just you know focus on modulating stuff rather than programming so that's super cool once you have your patterns all set you can do that. Now that that's saved, I'm going to restart the machine just to see. When I press play now, it should all sound the same as it did before. Yep, and there it is. By the way, I do have my dust of time set to load this preset, this patch. As soon as it turns on, same with the sample drum. So whatever digital modules you have, make sure that they're also programmed to uh, bring up the same sound that you've been using. So now let's say you want to program a new pattern, right? If I press the page key here, the arrow keys here, it'll change the pattern on whatever track is selected. Right? And that can be very cool to have this uh, separate control over the tracks, meaning you can keep the drum beat going and then just change the bass line or change the melody or change whatever. Personally, I like to have them all tethered so that each pattern is actually a combination of all four tracks. And there's an easy way to do that. You just hold both the arrow keys together and then you see that they light up orange. So now, as I use them, I flip all four channels together. So that's how I like to work. I like to have each pattern have its own beat, its own bass line, its own melodic pattern, its own rhythmic pattern. Using it like this, maybe I want the drum to be similar, but the variation. So how do I save, right? Just the drum track to a new slot. You just press the asterisk and record one time, not twice, and then choose, I chose key number two over here, right? So now when I change the patterns to B, press play, all we'll hear is the drum beat, right? Because I copied that onto the slot, the drum slot of uh, patterns B, right? And now, if I want to change anything, hold, long press the record again. All right, let's say I like this drum pattern. Let's go to track two here. And we can record a different bass line. Now, here's another way to record. Right, we've seen like live recording, but when the sequencer stopped, if I press record, now I can create a pattern SH101 style or like a key step from Arturia, which is just a sequence of notes, right? And uh, so you can just play the notes. If you tie them, you get the glide. If you press tempo, you get a rest. And if you press last step, you get a slide, and if you press this key over here, you have a tie. So these are all written here. There's lots of little letters, little words, that once you get used to the machine, you, you know uh, which ones correspond to which function that you're using, right? So let's program a bass line here. Okay. Let's play. What the hell? Oh, it's muted. <laughs> right, that's the thing. Keep track of what you have muted, right? You might record the pattern and then you don't hear it and what's wrong, you know? And uh, just make sure you don't have the track muted. So that's the bass line. I just recorded SH-101 style. I like it. 
there you have it. That's the second way to record. All right, so there's a couple of things about the arpeggiator that I failed to mention that I'd like to bring up before we move on. And uh, so let's go. I'm going to choose track two here, which is our Carpus Strong Voice. Right, and I'm going to set it to arpeggiate in the down mode. Right. Now, let's say I want to keep this going and lift my hands off. Well, there's a latch mode, which is the last step key. Right, so I can let go and it's going to keep going. Now, what happens when I play a new note? It's going to now go to that note, right? And it's going to start a new arpeggio based on whatever notes I add as I'm holding down some keys. However, there's another latch mode, which is the super latch mode. And the super latch mode is a long press on the last step. And now we see that it's blinking, right? And what this means is that I can now just uh, press some more keys to add notes to the arpeggio. And we can change the kind of arpeggio too, just by pushing one of the four arpeggio buttons. Here's the random one. This is the arpeggio, right? You choose any one of these note keys over here. And as long as they're blinking, you're in arpeggio mode. Make sure that you have the right track selected for the voice that you want to use, right? And if you want to latch, you can just press the last step and it'll keep those notes even after you've lifted your fingers, right? And you can play different chords and it'll arpeggiate all those chords. If I want super latch mode, I'll long press the last step key and now I can manually enter more notes into the pattern. All right? If I want to record this, I can as well. So let's go to an empty pattern here. We'll press play, set the record. We can see that it's a 16 step pattern. I can change that to make it a little longer if I want to. And there we go. So let's play that. Cool. So that by itself can also even be a metronome for some other things that I might want to create here. The drums also have a arpeggiator feature, which is actually a roller. Now, since these aren't melodic notes, the roller for drum tracks works a little bit differently. So in this case, it doesn't do a random up or down or anything like that. It really actually just does the roller based on the note subdivision that you've chosen, right? So here's the kick. In fact, this is a good way to record a four on the floor, right? There you go. Now I can get out of record and choose a faster subdivision and record a hi-hat that way. There you go. 
Now I can choose a fast roller here, right? With this, what is it, 30 second note? However, this is cool for fills and stuff. But it won't get recorded that way because the pattern necessarily only gets recorded based on the subdivision that is assigned to that particular track. So even if I record a snare row, you see that what gets recorded is still gonna fit that particular subdivision right there. Now if I want, I can, uh, can clear that now. Let's clear pattern two here. Now if I change the drum track to that subdivision, then you get Get that tighter subdivision and what you can do is just create a longer pattern and spread out your beat and then you can have these uh, quick sort of trappy hi-hats and stuff and fast rolls let's go back to what it's supposed to be you can do sh101 style recording for the drums as well Let's move to pattern D, which is empty. Drum track is already selected. And just as with a melodic voice, by simply pressing record while it's in stop, you are now in SH-101 type recording, right? So if I press the kick over here, we can now see that we only have one step in the pattern and it's queued up for you to enter a second step on the pattern. So if I press play right now, you're just gonna get a roll, watch that because it's just one step going over and over again, right? So let's do this again. And now I can use my tempo key here becomes a rest key, right? So I can play well, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? Now this is a 16 step pattern that I've just programmed by entering notes and uh, rests. That's what that pattern sounds like. And I can do the same for any other drum voice. Step editing for melodic voices. Let's quickly illustrate that. I'm gonna go to track one here, which is our Dust of Time bass voice, right? And now, if I uh, press play, and then long press record, we're now in edit mode. And what the display is showing us is what step we're currently editing. So what I can do is, in mean, step one, I can add a note. So now we're here. Let me mute the drums for now, so we only hear 16 step pattern and I've recorded one single note there. Now I can use the page key here to move forward to the next step and add another note, right? A rest is simply no note on that step. Add another note here. Now, if we want this note, for example, to slide into the next note, we can turn on slide here for that note. See, so there are some uh, modifiers here, some toggle switches that you can use to add particular characteristics to each step. So now the next note will be tied. See. Okay, now let's say I want this note to ratchet. I can just turn on the ratchet for that note. Let's leave uh, step nine with nothing and go to step 10 here and add a note there. Now 
Now let's go back to step 10 and make it glide. There you go. Yeah, turn that off. I want a longer rest here. Cool. Why not add a ratchet to that last one? Let's turn off the delay here so we can... Cool. So that's a pattern I've programmed by just using the step programming feature of the ground control instead of real time or SH-101. So there are various ways that you can enter notes and create melodies with this thing. Now, there are other things that you can do as well in step recording. So long press here. And uh, one thing that you can do is set velocity. You can choose the step you want to edit. And then you press velocity and you can use the keyboard to approximate a velocity value, right? And you can do the same thing with uh, modulation, which is a CC, MIDI CC number one. Why don't we have a look at some more of the functions on the bottom row over here. And uh, as I've already mentioned, you access these functions by pushing the tempo key. And as long as tempo is displayed here, you can choose any of these bottom row functions over here, right? In fact, I can hold the tempo button and then I don't have a set time. I can just choose any one of these that I want, right? So let's say, for example, I want to set the gate duration. There we go. Right now, gate duration is set to 50. So if I set gate duration to really short, right, and the top buttons, the arrow buttons jump in tens, the plus and minus buttons jump in singles. Now, listen to this. Let's mute the drums. So these are short notes. If I do the opposite, so go to gate duration and make the gates long, like 90. We get these longer notes. Now, one cool thing that you can do, and which is actually a new feature of firmware 2.0, is the use of the external CV inputs. So you have four CV inputs over here. They're labeled track D, track one, track two, and track three. And they're assignable to any of these functions on the bottom over here for any track. So you can really use any one of these inputs to affect any track and any parameter of said track. So let's get into that. Why don't we press tempo and go into external CV, right? Now to choose which one of the four inputs you're editing, you use the selector buttons over here. So now these aren't selecting tracks, they're selecting which CV input you are configuring, right? So let's go to the first one, track D, and it says off right now, but as I start pushing arrow keys, we see the display now shows the function that we will be editing. So this is the pattern shift. This is octaves, octaves is cool. This is shuffle, this is probability, and we'll talk about probability in a little bit. This is a ratchet, which is the number of repeats that happen when you have a ratchet. This is the slide time, and this is the gate length, right? And uh, so on. And we have also CC uh, value and pattern selection. You can even select the pattern externally using these CV inputs there. So very cool. You know, instead of using it for gate duration, I'm going to use it for octaves because that's going to be very, very noticeable. Now, the plus and minus keys here, the octave, they determine which is your destination track. In this case, since it's octaves, it's not letting me choose uh, any of the drum trigger tracks, only the melodic tracks, right? So here we'll choose track one, which is my bass track, right? And as I play the pattern now, we hear that pattern as we've programmed it. 
But now I can grab an output from my joystick here and stick it in to the track D input. Already this is at a lower octave and as I move my joystick up you can see me change the octave, right? Very cool, right? Now let's have a look at another thing here, the uh, probability, for example. I'm going to choose track 1, which is my bass track. I'm going to hit tempo and probability. Tempo probability. Right, now a probability of 0 means that uh, the pattern is just going to happen exactly as you programmed it. But as that number goes up, there will be a higher number of notes that get dropped randomly from the pattern. So let's have a look at that. Probability here. Now probability of 50. About half the notes are getting dropped. That's a pretty cool way to humanize your beat, to add a random variation to it. You can have different uh, probabilities for different tracks and different patterns. And that ensures that your, that your loop doesn't just repeat unchanged every time. You start getting variation. Right? Let's go back to that probability there. And this time we'll bring it back to zero for now. Now, you can also affect probability externally, right, using the external CV inputs. What we'll do is we'll program a just a kick drum that is basically a roll. So it's just a one-step pattern that's just rolling, right? Now, what I'll do is I'll assign external CV, right, instead of octave, we'll assign it to probability and we'll assign it to the drum one, right? So this one, probability does permit me to choose any of my drum triggers as well as my three melodic tracks. So you have D1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, T1, 2, 3, right? But we'll leave it at D1, okay? Right, so now as I have my joystick to the left, we get this full, full one bar roll, right? Of the kick drum. As I move my joystick towards the middle, we start getting this random kick pattern. And I can make it more dense as I turn the joystick towards the left, or more sparse. Right? With the joystick towards the right find my sweet spot, like right there for example. And you can do that with up to four parameters. So I could actually have four different outputs from different modulation sources uh, modulating the probability of four different drum voices for example or just the probability of one voice the gate length of another the slide time of another and uh, the number of ratchets of another and so on and so forth so these are freely configurable to any track and to any pretty much nearly any parameter for each track that's super cool and that's something that's new on firmware 2.0. It wasn't available before. Now, here's another thing that I wanted to demonstrate, which is using an external controller. As you can see, the ground control has a USB host port right here. 
So uh, you haven't seen this yet, but I'm going to turn my camera towards it now. I happen to have an Arturia Keystep Pro right here in front of my little rack. So I'm going to now connect the USB cable from the Keystep Pro into the ground control. And as you can see, it turns it on. It actually powers the controller, right? And already, this is loading up with track one selected on drum. So by default, that's sending MIDI to track 10, which is also the default track that the ground control receives on for the drum track. So already I have my my drum voice is available now on the keyboard here. So let's go to another pattern, pattern E. Give ourselves a four on the floor here to act as a metronome. We'll have the probability all the way up or all the way down rather. And now I can record in real time the other voices. Now what's cool here is that I can, just by using different MIDI channels on my controller or using multiple controllers, I can continue creating patterns on different channels, right? So now I've changed this from drum to sequencer and that's going to go to MIDI channel 1, which is my bass line. Now it's muted, let's unmute it. Now, notice one thing, if I stop now and press play, it looks my pattern is shifted. Like I was thinking of one somewhere else. This is an opportunity to show you the pattern shift function. So we're gonna choose track one here. That's the one we wanna shift. I'm gonna hit, not the asterisk, I'm gonna hit the tempo and pattern shift here. And we're going to... Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see how many steps we need to shift it. Right, let's see if that's it. Baseline is starting on the one. Okay, I can hit record again. Now I can choose track two here on my Keystep Pro, which will be sending data to MIDI channel two, which corresponds to our melodic track number two. All right, and same thing with track three. Now I'm Let's just make track three longer so we can have a nice long melody there. I bring it up a, lot, a few octaves. Let's go back to my joystick channel one here and make that LFO a little slower.
another cool thing here is that if I mute, let's say I mute the melodic track, track 3, I can still perform on it. Here's another advantage of using an external keyboard is, for example, velocity, right? The velocity that I apply when I play the keyboard actually does get recorded by the ground control. Now, you don't have a velocity output per voice, but that velocity information does go out via MIDI. So if I have uh, any MIDI devices, for example, I could control the dust of time via MIDI, so just send this MIDI output to the MIDI input here and assign velocity to certain internal parameters of the dust of time. So that's one thing I could do. Uh, also, you can assign velocity to the mod output. That's something we haven't looked at yet, the mod output. So why don't we have a look? So the way to configure the modulation output is to hit the running man here and just go to mod out. Now, this one's a little bit tricky you have to kind of look at the manual and memorize things because it's uh, not super easy to interpret what's going on in the panel here. But basically, the uh, All Drums button now becomes a selector between modulation and velocity, right? So as I push it, as you can see, looking like a U, there's actually a V, okay? And that, like N with a line on top, that's the M for modulation. And modulation is basically MIDI CC number one. Okay, but we're going to use velocity. Now here, the arrow buttons, they just toggle between bipolar output and unipolar output. Okay, so bipolar will be minus 5 to plus 5 and unipolar will be 0 to plus 5. We want unipolar. The way to assign the track is not by choosing the track selector down here, but using the mute switches, right? So, for example, velocity, uh, if we want to output the velocity of the drum track 1, right, to the mod out, then we select that, right? And we can choose any one of the drum tracks as well as the melodic tracks. So now I've selected track 1. So now, as I play softly here, we can see here on the dust of time, that only a little bit of voltage is opening up that parameter. Now as I press harder, right, it sounds very different. So now, why don't we go to pattern F, right? And uh, once again, let's quickly create a drum track here. Just a quick four on the floor. Okay, now we're going to record a pattern on the bass line here using the velocity. Here, that modulation output is sending the velocity data to the dust of time and affecting the timbre of the bass line. And that mod output can be assigned to any, any tracks, including the drum tracks, velocity or modulation data.
Now, there is a bunch of other things that you can do with this sequencer. You can, for example, set scales, you can program a user scale, and that will limit the note to whatever scale you've selected. You have the uh, reset input here, which we haven't even looked at, so you can actually reset each channel independently from the others. So you can get more experimental with it, right? You can start assigning CV values and reset inputs and things like that and start creating more wild kinds of patterns. But I, I really do think that the strong point of this sequencer is not so much the experimental stuff as much as the very intuitive musical stuff that you can play by simply using the keys. It's very nice that you have that glide right in there when you use the legato mode. So yeah, I've been using it for about two months and uh, right now it's my favorite sequencer. I love all of my sequencers for different things and depending on what kind of results I'm looking for, what kind of project I'm working on, what kind of idea I'm trying to develop, then maybe the Ericsson's Black Sequencer will take me out of my melodic comfort zone in a way that this one doesn't. But as far as just translating my musical ideas that I hear in my head immediately to something that's uh, making a sound out of my synthesizer, this thing is the, uh, the quickest route for me. I especially love the fact that it's a drum sequencer and a three-channel melodic sequencer in one unit, so because normally I would be using a separate sequencer for the drums or a separate drum machine. So definitely, especially for a small rig like this one, to have both drums and melodies available in a very playable, intuitive, musical way in a single sequencer uh, with a straightforward interface is really, really wonderful. The USB host functionality is great. Another thing I didn't mention is that you can actually use the ground control as the power supply for a rack about this big. So if I didn't already have a power supply here, I could connect a uh, a wall wart to this and then use a ribbon cable from the back of the ground control to feed all of the other modules. So that's another really cool feature. There's a uh, USB device port as well, so I could connect this to my computer, I could send MIDI to my computer, I could receive MIDI from the computer. It's a super fun and super useful module. Certainly there are a lot more things that I haven't covered, but the video is already getting kind of long. So that will be it for today. I hope you liked it. I hope you liked the ground control. And uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit like. And stay tuned for the next few videos that are coming up soon. All right, see you soon and stay noisy. So there are just a couple of things that I wanted to mention that I do think are important and shouldn't be left out of this video. One of them is transpose. So transposition is super useful for live performance because you can add a lot of variation, a lot of interest into your track if you suddenly change the key. So the way to do that, well, let's mute these two for now. We'll go back to track one here and uh, what we'll do is push both octave buttons together. So the minus and plus together. So it's similar to the pattern lock feature, right? So now I'm in F, see? I just used the keys to do that. Now if I unmute, you'll notice that this is only happening on the selected track. Right, so if you have uh, the need to transpose all of your melodic tracks at once, you can just hit the last step here. So now we have transpose lock.
is a super cool performance feature, right? Remember to save often, asterisk, record, record, right? Now, another thing that I wanted to mention is the live mode. Let's maybe load a different project. Remember that's asterisk last step. And uh, let's load project G here. So let's choose A. Now I'm gonna hit the asterisk and I'm in live pattern selection mode. And I can choose you know, just cue them up. Last thing I wanted to mention is pattern chaining. So if you're in uh, not in page lock mode, right? And let's mute the melodics here. I can hold track D here and then just enter a sequence of patterns. And it's gonna cycle through those patterns in that order. And it keeps that chain going until you enter a new chain or just select a new pattern. And I can do the same with any of the tracks. And I can also do it in pattern lock mode, right? Hit play, right? Now, as it's in pattern lock, I can hold any of the track selectors and create a sequence that way. And uh, that's it.